I learned on wooden dowel rods. I've always used them. They work. There's nothing ever failing on them. Plastic dowel rods as well. Sometimes people feel a little bit, they're wider. They're, they're almost, almost as big as these hidden pillars. They're wider. So for me, the plastics dowel rods, they, they work fine. They offer you really good structure. But to me, you're losing that much cake for every rod you push in. Thanks, love. Okay? You're losing cake. And when you put four in there or six in there, you've lost six times that. That's, that's like four servings of cake, right? So I, just, it's just my preference. I like the wooden dowel rods. They're easy to cut. Sometimes when you have the plastic dowel rods, if you don't have really sharp shears or it smashes the tube and now it's a little shape and sit around. I don't know. For me, the wooden ones work. Has anybody ever not stacked cake? I know that's why most of you are here. It's about cake structure, so we're going to go over this really quickly. So, um, wooden dowel rods, and I, I really, if you're going to get pruning shears, don't use scissors. Oh my gosh. How many times do I hurt myself using scissors? Pruning shears, Walmart, seven bucks, ratcheting action. <laughs> ratcheting action. Don't rely on the strength of your hand. Get this little ratcheting action in here, it makes it so much easier. Okay? It locks so it's safe. It's regular pruning shoes. But make sure these don't go in the garden. Leave <laughs> these in your toolbox. I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. Okay. So the bigger the cake is that's going on top of here, the more dowel rods you're going to need. So what I've got here is a 12-inch cake. <coughs> All right? Let's say I'm going to put a 10-inch square on top of that. Okay? So it's going to go way out here to the edge. It's going to be like nice and big, almost this size. An inch short on every edge. So instead of putting four dowel rods in, like I might do for a small cake like this one, I would put in, you know, on the corners, maybe eight, maybe nine dowel rods. You want more support for a bigger cake. Because it's not only supporting that next layer, but it's also supporting all the layers that are on top of that one. Okay, so bigger layer, more support. Make sense? Yeah. There, I think there's charts for them, but you know me. I told you I don't follow the rules. So that's me. Okay, here's how you do it. So uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to put this one on top of there. So I want to stay within my 8 inch. You can take the old, you know, the perfect precise way to know exactly where the rim is going to be is to lightly put a cake circle on there, draw around with little toothpicks, and now I know it's all center, and that, and that, so that way you stay in. You're smart. You can eye up the 8 inch circle, right? Okay, so just make sure you stay within that diameter of what's going on there next. So what I do, make sure Make sure, make sure your dowels are perpendicular. I mean, we all get lazy after we are tired, after we've assembled this thing, and it's all cute and decorated, and it's like ready for Sunday to come. So make sure it's it's parallel to your work surface. Don't go in like this, or don't go in like this, and oops, now I messed it up, let me straighten it out, because you're tearing through the cake, and now it's not secure. Absolutely take your time, hover above it for a second, touch the top of the cake, Make sure it's completely perpendicular to your work surface. And then just push down and go slow. Make sure it stays perpendicular to your work surface. It's still frozen in the middle. We'll pretend it's not. So what I do is I kind of just mark where the top is with my thumbnail. Pull it right back out. Do not move your finger. I know exactly where it's going. I'm just going to line up the, the blade of my pruning shears right beside my thumbnail. Make sure you cut straight across. Try not to get angles where you're cutting. Now, let me say this. How many times, okay, so now I'm going to go over here and measure this one and cut it, and get another one in here, and measure that and cut it. Well, darn, now it's not level. You know, it happens, you know, maybe there's an eight, a sixteenth of an inch here and a sixteenth of an inch difference there, but it's higher or lower. So what I want you to do is really look at your paint. First, do your best to level it, so you have a nice level top. But check it out, and if there's a high spot, that's the one you want to mark, and then, instead of t sticking down rods in to measure for each different height, measure them against the highest point on your cake. Does that make sense? So like the highest, like let's say I have a little piece of valley that's really dramatic. I'd probably go back and fix that. Since we need me. But if you have a slightly higher point, measure off of that one. Okay? So you'll just want to use that as your pattern. Don't shoot these on the side. Be surprised how far they fly. So that one can go back in, now I'll use this clean one to measure mine. They should all be the same height. 
Have I lost anybody? <coughs> Always check. See if there's any wood shards that came off there. Extra safety can't hurt. Okay. Beautiful, isn't it? <laughs> you can take a picture. 